Hi y'all, I'm Glenn, the corporate chef at Brookshire Grocery Company. And today I want to show you an interesting twist on meatballs. Now, I know everybody likes to eat meatballs, but nobody likes making meatballs because they are a bit of a pain. But I'm going to show you a neat way to make them that takes half the work out of it. All right, now we're going to make some meatballs. Um, now to do that, I can't, there's, there's two major components to making meatballs. You're going to roll them and you're going to brown them. I can get rid of the browning part, but I can't get rid of the rolling part. You got to do that, otherwise it wouldn't be meatballs. So let's get started. And what you first want to do is, uh, the recipe calls for numerous ingredients, but you want to start with your liquid ingredients first. We've got an egg that's been beaten. We've got a little condensed milk, you know, regular milk or even cream will work too. And to that, we're going to add some oatmeal. Now, this is quick cook oatmeal. You want to get that and get the oatmeal to start absorbing liquid. You can add a bit of salt at this point. A little pepper. Now the recipe calls for a pretty good bit of, of cayenne. I like it hot, so I usually put the whole amount in. You can put half or, or none if you want, if you don't like it spicy, but it'll definitely give it a kick. Now while that's sitting, we are going to um, get our garlic ready. Now I love using garlic presses. I know some folks may not think that that's you know, very culinary correct, culinarily correct, but for the home cook and even for myself, for the size recipe that most of us do, a garlic press is invaluable. They're not very expensive, they last forever, and they make your life a lot easier in the kitchen if you like garlic. So, I like a good bit. I'm probably adding just a bit more than the recipe calls for, but that certainly isn't going to hurt anything. Go ahead and mix it up. Now next we've got some onion. And you're going to want to dice this as finely as you can get it. This is where you're going to have to get your hands dirty. We'll get this mixed up. Now in with your ground beef, ground pork. Now I like to use a glove. You don't have to. Just keeps things a little cleaner. And from there, you just start mixing. If you just kind of throw this all in the bowl at once without following the steps, it'll work. It just certainly makes things a lot easier to get all the ingredients incorporated together. You're kind of working in layers. Now another trick to making meatballs too is once you get this mixed up, you know that as you're handling it, rolling meatballs, it can get kind of sticky. If you put this back in the fridge and get it really as cold as you can get it without freezing, it'll really get stiff again. And uh, at that point, it makes it a whole lot easier to, to roll. And you want to want to roll these in about one ounce balls. And they don't have to be perfect. You sh this recipe makes about, about 35. So now you've got your meatballs uh, rolled up. You're going to want to heat your oven to 350 degrees. We'll top each one of these with a bit of sauce. You can use homemade barbecue sauce. You can use store-bought. You just want to give all of them a good dial. If you like lots of barbecue sauce, you can really, you know, really do it up and, you know, make them swimming in it if you want. It'll still work. So, sauced, 350 degree oven, and we're going to cook them for about 45 to 50 minutes. So there's a Texas twist on meatballs. Now, if you take this recipe to your next get-together, I guarantee it'll be the first thing that disappears. Now, you can find this recipe and many others in the October issue of Celebrate Cooking. It's available online or at your neighborhood brochures.